Welcome to Abstract Wonderland. That's the title of this series that my friend Randy Jarvis and I produced over three years uh, at a particular location in uh, Wisconsin. This particular photo you're, or image you're looking at right now uh, has various meanings for various people, which is one of the beauties of the abstract images we produced. Everyone sees something different. Um, I saw it as almost an album cover from the 70s of a Moody Blues album. My friend Randy sees a, a flying bird and, and calls it the, the bird shot. As we have uh, employees and customers touring Marco, each one as they look at this kind of come up with their own, own ideas. This series started uh, from a phone call from my friend Randy. He stumbled upon this um, uh, museum of uh, railroad cars in Wisconsin and called me on his cell phone. Uh, very excited, spoke uh, in a real, real clipped and, and quick fashion and, and he's the first one who used the term abstract wonderland that he had discovered. Uh, I could tell his excitement and knew that a photo journey was probably in the making uh, as I had to see what he was so excited about. He sent me some images on, a, on an email after looking at them, uh, I immediately called him and said, Randy, when can we get back there and uh, do some work on these? We set a date. Uh, I traveled to Spooner, Wisconsin uh, with him, and we went to the uh, Railroad Museum and started our work. It was a, a, a drizzly day. Uh, we had to work in the rain most of the day, and that, I think, is what helped us achieve a lot of the depth and the brightness of the color that you see in these images. They were all wet. Uh, we had plastic bags over our equipment. Uh, it was kind of fun uh, working through those struggles. And in fact, we got a couple images of each other uh, trying to stay dry, uh, taking these photographs. We came back uh, several weeks later, and uh, the sun was out and everything was dry, and it was a bright sunny day, which you would think would be perfect for photography. But those images didn't turn out nearly as, as uh, wonderful as the ones you, you see here. We spent uh, three different sessions uh, over the course of a whole summer uh, going back and shooting these railroad cars. Sadly, they're gone. Uh, we don't really know what happened to them, but most of them have moved out. Uh, and I don't know if they sold them or, or they were in various stages of being restored. So we feel some of them maybe were restored in some people's mind, but in our mind they were ruined because they now have a fresh, fresh coat of paint. It was, a, it was kind of fun watching us work, if you would have been there. Uh, we, we went on our separate ways and uh, didn't even see each other for you know, half hour, 45 minutes at a time, all are engrossed in you know, the detail and the photographs that we were seeing. But you'll be amazed how many are similar locations that we, we found that we have uh, similar images, but yet discovered them on our own at, at different times. Some we went back and worked harder uh, the second and third time uh, and it seemed like as we took these photographs we kept zeroing in closer and closer in less and less of the surrounding image and more detail of a very micro part of, of the railroad car. Uh, we made sure, or at least I did on, on most of mine, that we left some of the rivets that you see in some of the images in so that there was a little tie-in to the reel but yet it was abstract enough so you really didn't know what they came from. And that's kind of half the fun when people look at them. They really don't know what they are. Many people think they're paintings. Uh, many people feel they're highly manipulated in Photoshop. And when I tell them that these are simply railroad cars in different stages of disrepair and um, very minor adjustments in Photoshop for clarity and maybe a little, little tweak in, in color, they are what they were uh, live at, at the railroad yard and they're pretty shocked at that. Why these railroad cars were, were such wild colors we don't we don't know and some of them the, the painting uh, the paintings and the colors were, were astounding uh, but it really added the dimension um, to the artwork and made it pretty exciting. It was really fun uh, when I showed these to uh, Kate Kodak the artist who was helping and designer who was helping uh, f facilitate the art in the Marco new facility. I showed her these images. Uh, she became very excited, uh, thought they represented a very modern approach uh, that we were trying to get across in the building. 
And I had another friend who had already shared with me a mounting technique. He works at a graphic house in the, in the Minneapolis St. Paul area. And so these are printed on a, on a metallic, silver metallic paper and laminated onto a plexiglass and then mounted through these standoffs or pucks we call them uh, against the wall. So a very modern look. Uh, the designer, again, Kate, agreed that that would be a very good way to showcase the art in this facility. And uh, as you could see, if you come to Marco and take a tour, we've got them throughout the building. We get a lot of comments from uh, employees and, and also from customers visiting. They find it intriguing that it was an employee that actually produced the, the uh, photographs that are in the building. And we, we try to do that at Marco. We have a culture of using the talents of everybody in the, in, in the company. We actually have a band that we affectionately call the Marco Band. It, is, it isn't, but it's a, a group of employees that uh, are, are musicians, and we use them in employee functions uh, quite often. So it's been fun to have them up and, and, and displayed in such a dramatic fashion. Uh, they're very large. Many of them are 32 by 48 or larger. I really don't have anything else to say about the artwork, but I welcome you to come to Marco and uh, take a tour. I'd be happy to show you uh, all the images, and uh, we could talk a little more about it.